what is IIoT? The obvious uh, next question. So once we understand the automation stack, once we understand the automation stack, the next question is how can I use IIoT to help my business become more efficient, right? I mean, in the, the name of the game is to do more with less, always. Let's do more with less. So the question here is what is IIoT? It's what is IIoT and why does it matter? IIoT is, um, I'll do IIoT on that side. So the traditional, the traditional integration now, if I wanna get my, all of my PLCs, I have many of these. I could have thousands of PLCs and HMIs on my plant floor. So IIoT is, I've got many PLCs and pieces of equipment on my plant floor, okay? Right now, it requires very specific engineering to connect my, the stuff that's on the plant floor with my SCADA system, with my MES system, with my ERP system. The way that these tradi this traditionally happens is I connect my PLC to the SCADA system. And generally that's done through like an OPC UA, an OPC UA connection, right? I've got an OPC server that's talking to all this stuff. This is the traditional way. And then SCADA connects to MES. MES does not connect to the plant floor. It gets its data through SCADA, okay? So you have to have SCADA to, to make your MES work. What most plants do is they have an MES system, they have a SCADA system and they've got PLCs and HMIs, but it's not integrated here with MES. So what do they do? They take their MES system and it's all paper. Even does that. A, a person does that. You, they end up with a routing sheet. They've got a, a they have a, a traveler, a paper traveler that goes from one manufacturing operation to the next. It's all done with paper. They can't tie any of the process data directly to the MES without using people. Okay, you got to have people do all this stuff. Lots and lots of dollars on just people handling data. What it, so what is IIoT? IIoT is the idea of getting rid of all that. So then con connecting the MES layer to the ERP layer sometimes may be the idea that it is integrated. I may be using something like SAP to do both. But the problem with your manufacturing execution system does lots of things. It's not just doing the work order and handling the raw materials. It's not, that isn't all your SAP, your MES system does. Your MES system also calculates efficiency. And to do that, you've got to talk to that stuff on the floor, right? You need, and so this is, we call this OEE. So in the traditional architecture, the MES system is not normally connected to the SCADA. I mean, in, in less than 5% of the applications in the, uh, in the real world, real life applications, they're not connected. So it's people that have to do that with paper. The MES system connects to the ERP system, okay? And the ERP system is how you receive a sales order and then you dispatch that sales order into manufacturing orders to produce your widgets. So there's a connection here. There's no connection here so far between ERP and cloud, very, very rarely, because you can't do it with traditional tr traditional mechanisms. So what is the, the, the direction that, what is the IIoT concept? And, and why is it that more people don't have this? Have the PLC to SCADA connection, the SCADA MES connection, the MES to ERP connection? The answer is money. It costs money to engineer all this. You have to pay engineers, you either gotta hire people or you gotta hire integrators. And every time you add a machine, you gotta pay for the engineering at each layer. Which gets us to IIoT. So we've already addressed the fact that I, there's thousands of these in my plant or, on, or in my enterprise. IIoT is the idea that all of these, not just our PLCs, it's all of our equipment. It's our routers, it's the thermostat inside the plant, it is the phone system, it is the cameras, it's everything. It's the internet of things, but an industrial grade. What they do is they all, IIoT is, they all publish to one namespace, to one location, a namespace, that contains all their information. So I've got an ID on each of my devices, and I have an organized namespace. Our company here is Intellic, 
So our we would have our enterprise would be Intellic, our locate our location would be Dallas, our area would be engineering, and then we would have all of our devices publishing into this namespace. So why does this matter? Why does IIoT matter? Because now all of our systems our SCADA system, our ERP, our MES, our ERP, and our cloud, they all subscribe to their data in the namespace. You are connecting devices to infrastructure, but more importantly, you're connecting devices to people. That's what IIoT is. There are lots of buzzwords behind it, but what IIoT really is, is plugging all of everything into an ecosystem and having all of your consumers get their data from one namespace. We have a namespace in this old style. You have a namespace here, you have a namespace here, you have a namespace here, you have a namespace there, and you have to have people engineer all those solutions and all those connections. Every time you add a node, you gotta spend money at this layer, at this layer, and at this layer. So where do you start, where do you spend your money then if you're not spending it here anymore when you're using IIoT? So using IIoT supported devices, the manufacturer is the one who makes it so that my device is going to show up in the place I need it to. So I plug my device in, I plug my Allen Bradley PLC, which by the way, they don't support open IIoT protocols yet. But if we use an example, Wago, Easy Automation, Red Lion, Hirschman or, or, uh, or um, Opto 22, or you, know, you could list off more than a hundred manufacturers that support IIoT protocols, open IIoT protocols, Siemens shortly. Like MQTT. Right, like MQTT, exactly. But MQTT is really the protocol to use, our DMP3, for example. What happens is I plug my PLC in and I point my PLC to the namespace. And then all of my systems just subscribe to the data that's in that namespace. So I spend my money here where I'm already spending it. I spend my money here where I'm already spending it. And I spend my money here where I'm already spending it. I don't spend money here. You wanna know why? because I already have to pay the OEM to build my machine for me. So now what they do is they build the machine, they set it on the plant floor, and they point it to the namespace, and these systems consume the data, just like that. We get rid of all of this. Because the reason that companies aren't innovating is because they get sticker shock every time they have a great idea, and the engineering firm comes in and says, big dollars here, big dollars here, big dollars here. Here's the other thing. Integrators aren't good at all these things. You have integrators that specialize in this connection, you have integrators that specialize specialize in this, and you have the vast majority of integrators specialize in this. You have like the Accenture group, they're known for their cloud-based analytics. They're really good at this piece here. They're not good at this stuff. We specialize in the entire stack. That's the way the whole the company has been built to specialize in the entire stack. We are experts at every layer, and we specialize in taking companies from here to there. That's what we do which is the next conversation, right? Digital transformation, right? So what is the digital transformation? The digital transformation is taking that and moving it over here. So now what happens is I have digital reports, I have an electronic traveler, I have an electronic routing, and all of our people are interfacing with them through these layers. You almost just described the digital factory. Well, I'll, I'll I can- digital factory next? Yeah, we can do digital factory next. All right.